Thank you for the introduction. So today I'll be presenting part of my PhD work between Southampton University and UCL. And before I start my talk, I would like to acknowledge my co-authors listed on the slide. There are too many to mention, but some of them are in attendance today. The main aim of this research is to inform the design of future technology systems, especially those that involve agency delegation and unpredictability. So in this work, we studied the way that people use vegetable box schemes, or in North America, they're referred to as community-supported ag agriculture. We were particularly interested in this service because similar to the technology systems that we are interested in, it also has unpredictability and agency delegation. So as the previous talks have mentioned, the Internet of Things involve many different types of systems that are interconnected and equipped with different types of sensors that are capable of generating and gathering vast amounts of data at unprecedented speed. However, as users have limited capacity, they would need to be supported to be able to handle such data deluge from these IoT devices. And so for the IoT to deliver on its promises to, to enable applications that foster a more efficient, sustainable, and healthy way of living, then future technology systems will need some degree of autonomy or automation. This would then allow people to delegate some degree of agency to uh, systems to permit them to act on their behalf. We refer to this concept as the autonomous IoT, where autonomous IoT systems are not only capable of monitoring data, but also um, they are able to respond proactively respond to environmental changes that they sense, effectively performing actions on behalf of the user. Examples of autonomous IoT systems, such as given in previous talk, in include self-cleaning vacuum robots and also the Nest thermostat, which, is, uh, which can change its temp temperature based on home occupancy. However, because of um, imperfections in automatic data analysis and classification, biases and noises in real world data, these systems may produce results that look unpredictable to the users. Imagine, for instance, your Nest thermostat suddenly deciding to turn on the heating because it thought that you were at home, but actually it was your cat playing around. So a key research challenge then in HCI is how do we design interaction mechanisms that will help users work around this unpredictability? And to inform this design challenge, we wanted to learn from existing practices. As humans, we deal with agency delegation and unpredictability in everyday life even though mostly so far without technology. In particular, a number of our existing food practices already involve some form of agency delegation. For instance, when we get takeaway food or go to a cafe, we delegate cooking to other people. And so we decided to focus on people's usage of VegBox schemes. And the VegBox scheme is essentially a service that people can subscribe to, for example, weekly or fortnightly, to receive a box of typically locally grown vegetables and fruits. The content of the boxes vary week to week based on seasonality and availability. Veg, VegBox schemes also involve periodic del delivery of products to people's home. And so we think that this is not very far from the idea of an IoT-driven shopping system. An example would be Amazon Dash, although in Amazon Dash you would need to press a button to order something. But other examples include products from Brita where they use timers to fully automate the orders. And therefore we think that VegBox then is a service that has some similarities to IoT systems, which through it we can study agency delegation and unpredictability. So we ran a qualitative study in the UK where we recruited two groups of people. Uh, the first group included five households that were already subscribed to this scheme. Instead, the second group included six households who we subscribed to the scheme at the time of the study. The study was split into three phases. First, we conducted an entry interview to ask participants about their existing food practices. Second, participants took part in a two-week long diary study where they sent us photos and text des descriptions through WhatsApp of instances when they used items from the veg box. Finally, 
we conducted an exit interview where participants were asked specific questions about their veg box use based on the diary that they recorded. So we performed an inductive thematic analysis on the data, and the four themes that you can see on the slide emerge. For the purpose of this presentation, I will talk about the two that are currently highlighted, but the others are available on the paper. The first theme is about warranting delegation. So our findings revealed that for people to be encouraged to delegate agency, especially to an, an unpredictable service, there are various conditions that need to be met. For instance, participants warranted agency delegation on the grounds that the veg box provided them with a peace of mind. And for example, it intuit, uh, this ensured them that they always had a supply of fresh fruits and vegetables at home. Another factor is related to how participants considered the veg box as a value for money. For example, in this quote, one participant told us that how she found the veg box to be very cheap, but also because they bring it to your home and you don't need to go out. So this suggests that not only did people find the veg box a value for money in terms of financial cost, but also in terms of other costs that are important to them. And in this case, it's related to convenience. People were also willing to delegate agency to a veg box provider, provided that they know they would bu be buying locally uh, produced, local seasonal produce. For them, this means that not only do they get high quality produce, and, those are the, and also that it's good tasting, but by subscribing, they also help a local nonprofit farm, and in turn also help the local community. And this is specific to the scheme we worked with during the study. Other participants warranted agency delegation on the grounds of enabling a healthy diet. In fact, one of our participants' reason for subscribing to the scheme was that she turned vegan at the time of the study. In this quote, she says, the veg box would force her to have some vegetables that she would never buy, suggesting that she took advantage of the veg box to maintain her diet. Finally, another factor that frequently came up, and I think for me at least was the most interesting was the fact that, as this quote says, participants like the randomness aspect of the veg box. And this element of surprise allowed them to try out a variety of vegetables, some of which were completely new to them. This then allowed them to try out and discover new recipes. Others even felt that it challenged their usual cooking routine and provided them sort of a jolt of to your rot, as they say. Another theme that emerged is related to how participants incorporated the veg box in their everyday life. The veg box was often complemented with items that participants considered staple and that they would not receive in the box so that they can cook specific meals that they usually eat. In this quote, our participant mentioned how she would use the list of upcoming items to just see what they're getting and then buy what else is needed. Participants also talked about the different levels of ad adaptation they had to do in order to fit the content of the veg box with their usual food practices. The different ways of this adaptation can be thought of as, as a spectrum. On one end of the spectrum, veg box items were easily adapted through snacking, which is basically eating the food item on its own. On the middle of the spectrum, veg box items were adapted as part of their routine cooking. So the veg box item is simply something that they're accustomed to cooking or something that they can easily include into what they usually cook. But at the sort of more extreme end or the other end of the spectrum, there are situations where participants had to completely adapt their existing recipes to accommodate items from the box. In one particular case, um, our, one of our participants received a vegetable that she didn't like. But instead of throwing it in the bin, she decided to infuse the item into a soup that she doesn't normally make, in her words, for hiding its taste. And this clearly, this, this example shows like how adapting, adapting existing practices led to fostering innovation. And we see that a number of instances as well. In another occasion, a participant received a lot of courgettes or zucchinis, as they're called here. And this was something that uh, her husband did not particularly like. And so she had to come up with new ways or something else to, to, to use them to. 
So, so she decided to use a spiralizer, which is a kitchen, a kitchen gadget that can cut up vegetables into pasta-like ribbons, allowing the vegetables to be used as substitute to normal pasta. So I didn't know a spiralizer was a thing. I'm not sure if many of you do, but if you do and you are into avoiding car car carbs, definitely should check that out. But anyway, using the spiralizer, she made courgette which is a spaghetti noodles replaced with spiralized zucchini. And this actually resulted in her husband actually liking the dish, much to the horror of my Italian PhD supervisor. <laughs> this, shows, <laughs> this shows then how incorporating this unpredictable into people's routines can actually sometimes result in uh, good discoveries, I guess for some. So based on our findings, there are a number of design implications we presented in the paper, and a couple of them I will talk about in the next few slides. So the first, implica oh, sorry. the first implication is about supporting creativity. So in the literature, when people talk about autonomous systems, in fact, as mentioned in the earlier presentations, the key emphasis or even the only one is around efficiency and convenience. And these factors also come up in our study, but what is different and what I consider an important contribution, perhaps the most important contribution of our work, is that our participants also valued a different set of factors that go beyond efficiency and convenience, such as creativity and discovery. For instance, many of our participants found that the veg box element of surprise made them more creative in their cooking. Others valued the discovery of previously unknown vegetables, enabling them to try out new recipes. And so this result points to the opportunities for autonomous technology to offer items or actions that users may not expect as a feature. It also suggests that users of autonomous systems are can be tolerable to unpredictability, at least if the cause is understood and accepted. And so we feel encouraged to stress that autonomous IoT design should not only strive towards optimality and accuracy, but also accept the fact that uncertainty and predictability can actually lead to beneficial user experience. And since unpredictability can be welcomed, then I autonomous IoT system should also support people's creativity through helping them to innovate and also adapt. In the food domain, this can be achieved by providing creative recipes, ideas about how to prepare, combine, and cook items, much like the IBM chef Watson. This could also include instructions on how to adapt existing uh, recipes, how to manage a surplus, sur surplus of items, or how you might hide flavors of undesired items so that you don't waste them. The second implication is about supporting value calculation. In this study, people mentioned values such as locality, health, and convenience that enabled them to delegate agency even to an unpredictable service like the veg box. Therefore, it is important to cater for all of people's values and support people's value calculation practices through design. We should embrace the fact that these systems are imperfect and that researchers should focus on mixed initiative approaches in which agency can be transferred with, uh, from system to the user and vice versa to support users' own calculation practices. And so one approach could in, in involve solutions that allow people to express their values and define how computational systems should respond to them. Another approach would be to make information relevant to the values and device easily available to the users. For example, uh, in the case of autonomous cars, showing a comparison between of fuel efficiency or how long a trip will take between manual and autonomous operation might actually be able to help people make an informed decision about when to delegate and when to revoke agency. So to conclude, in this presentation, we describe the findings of a qualitative study, which seeks to understand agency delegation to an inherently unpredictable service through the VegPox scheme. Our findings reveal how people incorporated unpredictability in their everyday life and that agency delegation is warranted through different factors, some of which go beyond convenience and efficiency. Our design implications suggest that future AIoT systems, 
Autonomous IT systems will need to support people's diverse values and creative practices to encourage people to engage with such systems. And before I end, again, just to repeat, I am finishing my PhD and looking for work, especially around or near uh, Montreal. Um, although this paper is about user research, my background is actually quite technical and uh, I'm sort of familiar with building prototypes and evaluating them. So if you are interested, please get in touch. And that is all. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I'll take any questions. Questions by anyone? Good talk. Uh, Thank you. We learned not just new ideas, but also new recipes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one thing I was curious about is that uh, you had two groups of uh, participants, one who are already subscribing to the wedge box and one who subscribed to the wedge box for the study. So do you think was, there was any difference in their adaptability or adjustability to the un uncertainty because for those participants who just subscribe because that they know that the duration is limited. So they are more, might be more patient and might be more willing to adapt rather than say the other set of participants. Yeah, it's a good question. And yeah, we do, we do talk about this in the paper. And yeah, that is true actually. Those that are, were already subscribed to the scheme, they were more easily able to adapt the veg box into their existing pra practices. In fact, some of the examples that I gave, like this uh, spiralizing courgettes and hiding this taste were coming from people that were already subscribed to the scheme. And in contrast, those that were not, or were we only subscribed to the scheme during the study, they were more sort of, um, uh, they were not, they were less sure of what to do. And in some cases, there were items thrown because they were not they didn't know what to do with them or, or they gave them away. So yes, definitely the, this kind of um, adaptability does depend on sort of experience of, of uh, people with the veg box. Okay, uh, thank you for your presentation. This was really interesting and I really like your idea of, of studying this type of improvisation to learn more about delegation to artifacts. Um, but I was wondering because you're your presentation was indeed quite positive and emphasizing the, the positive effects, but your remarks now triggered me to formulate this question about, so there were also cases where vegetables were thrown away because the uh, offer was inappropriate or, or it required too much creativity or coping from, from the people receiving it. So how, how would you like, um, follow that through in your recommendations because it, it was lacking. Yeah, thanks. And we do mention this quite a bit also in, in the paper. And definitely there were instances where it was difficult for, for users to deal with, with um, the veg box, especially in terms of, you know, integrating it with their sort of local uh, sort of coordinating practices. And um, we do have sort of com recommendations that talk about sort of coordinated practices. And for example, we talk about um, how for how it needs to be like um, autonomous systems should also be able to support this coordinated practices, be able to help people um, sort of um, deal around what's um, uh, uh, what's possible for users, what's what's e easier for them, and um, supporting them through those means, if that sort of answers your questions. Yeah, I think it would have been nice just to, to see those like mistakes in, in your presentation as well. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, just because of limited time and like, um, um, yeah, but definitely it's, it's available in the paper and we can talk about it after, after this as well. Okay, good, right. great, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. So no other questions, let's thank the speaker and all the speakers in fact for this interview.